Hello, listeners. Welcome to the Out of Our Depth podcast, where we are well and truly out of our depth. <laughs> I am your host, Matt. And I'm Liam. And this podcast is all about cars, our life experiences, good stories, and a lot of things we don't understand. We hope you enjoy. Hello, listeners. Hello. It's not a Sunday, it, but in fact, not. it's a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> are uh, we drinking coffee? No. What are we drinking, Liam? Uh, we're on the Vino Tinto. Mm. Well, Cheap red specifically, wine. I'm, I'm <laughs> drinking a jammy red roux, which all I can say is one of the worst wines I've ever tasted in my life. That's not a great name, not going to lie. Um, I've got a beachfront California Merlot from uh, Aldi. Uh, it's described as silky and smooth. Um, Interesting. And I was thinking, like, does anybody want a jagged and like rough coffee? Uh, no, wine, oh my god, Coffee. this is not a great start. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, okay. actually, that okay. sounds quite nice because mine's jammy and vibrant with notes of juicy red berries, vanilla and chocolate. To say the least, it's overpowering, not wow. a bad. But I was running around the house because I didn't have the foresight to go to Aldi <laughs> and pick a silky and smooth bottle. There you go. I mean, I've got this one I got for my birthday, which I've really been wanting to try. And I was like, if it's, if it's alcoholic, it's mine. Let's go. <laughs> so that, that's where we're at. Christ. The cheapest ball in the house. But, yeah. Um, so instead of this podcast, we're falling to sleep as opposed to waking up. A new yeah. dynamic. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's the best dynamic drinking. And uh, in the evening, it's just after half past eight when we were started recording. So it oh, yeah. could change things up. <laughs> this was a logistical nightmare to set up. I'm not even sat at it. I'm just lying on the floor in a pomegranate la- smelling lounge <laughs> in my house in Wales. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Well, it's, it's better than like whatever echoey expanse you were in before, just before we started recording. Oh, man. <laughs> From our dungeon. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want that. But, Liam, yes. what happened on Sunday? What happened this whole weekend that we really want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. Nothing that important in our world, you know. Yeah, it's fairly exactly. bland and unimportant, but maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of race oh. going on and perhaps some sort of formula cars mm, mm, with, you know, mm. international oh, drivers. <laughs> international drivers. Some some Russian drivers, which are absolutely shy. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there. Why don't you take us away with like some sort of uh, introduction to the first race of the season? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we had testing a couple of weeks ago, and which proves as much from testing as it normally does like nobody had any idea where anybody really was like you can tell like yeah. if a car looks un- particularly unstable but that's about it um and then it was sort of like two weeks of like every youtuber writer blogger influencer nan us us um, yeah uh writing Sorry, talking <laughs> videoing about where everybody's sat uh within the order and then like finally we get to uh i guess even the free practices you're not too sure but like qualifying was like the first insight and it's like w- what this season's actually going to look like and that was you, we actually get to see a team's true pace yeah and people stop chatting shit well chat less shit <laughs> well um how good the cars are this year and like, exactly who's, be and winning, who's who, who's the competition for like world driver mm. title and all that <laughs> i like it and what did we learn um well uh Aston look a bit shit. No, oh, well, don't believe the hype. Not a bit shit. Just like taking a bit of a hit this year. Yeah, uh, I totally bought into it as well. <sighs> Me too. I, I was in the band camp of how many podiums is Vettel going to smash this season, and all I thought is, oh no, it's not even going to be one. <laughs> were, you, were you as sad as me just watching that race of him, like just yeah. like yeah. making his way forward a little bit, and they're just heading back and back and back. I it mean, was, it was absolutely just poor strategy. What, well, I think driving into the back, back of Ocon, was it? Was probably less bad strategy and more. He's, he's lost some of his skill in wheel-to-wheel racing, which was kind of like mm, mm. hard to watch. Yeah, it's like he got overtaken and he almost forgot that the car in front was going to break. Yeah, like... I just... It was, I don't understand where he thought he was going to go around that corner. I, it, mm. like he came back over to where like Ocon had overtaken him to and he just slammed into the back I, I don't understand how you would have thought like 
they were going to go anywhere else. I think we can conclude it was embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. But not as embarrassing as doing more formation laps than race laps. <laughs> we say no to Mazepin. We say no to Mazepin because he's yeah. an asshole with no skill. Yeah. For context, for con... Shit. For con... <laughs> crap. Put the wine down. Put the already. wine down. Yeah, exactly. For context, listeners, basically, uh, rich Russian daddy bought a spot at a team before he was necessarily ready or good. Like, he was in F2, so, I mean, but it's yeah. probably the same situation there. F2 is very inconsistent in terms yeah. of, like, where, where, how good they actually are. Mm. I feel like it's obviously much easier to get a seat in F2 than it is F1. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, they've had some real trash in the past there. Like, Yeah, especially yeah. if you're coming in with money because the team's... I mean, even just their budget is probably just like very, yeah. very small. And sponsors aren't going to really pay anything for a sport. Yeah, I mean, who watches F2 other than to fill the half an hour before F1? It's like, oh, it's, it's yeah, it's on, you know, like you just wondered about the house, like, oh, I'll put it on just so I'm ready for when it, the proper race starts. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of another, an, an example that's kind of like, we don't really want to watch F2, but it's there. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's like watching the, the end credits of an episode of Friends before you've watched the episode. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I'm bored, but here it is. Because it, it no. you don't really get it in other sports. Like, you know, when it's Man City versus Everton or something, you don't, they mm. don't get the under-16 team on, do they? Just before. <laughs> no, exactly. But I've actually thought exactly what it is. Okay, hit me. So, you know, like 90s films, maybe like... Uh, you know, I'm not even going to try and remember one of them, but <laughs> you know where they have super long opening like instrumentals and they'll show like random things and the actors' names and it goes on for far too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got to get like maybe, the whole titles out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe you can think of an example for me. I want to say something like Seven. I feel like that has an unnecessarily long intro. I mean, Yeah. You know what? Let's just glance over this section. I'll come back next week and I'll tell. I'll give. You, I'll have a list of five, at least five, where it goes on for far too long. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. oh, anyway, so here's some here's some notes I wrote down from the race. Go on. In case me. you want, you can comment on them. Uh, Perez, an epic comeback from the back. Yeah. But what the fuck was with his steering wheel at the start? I mean, I I said this before in the group chat. It was just like. Honda engines, they found more power. They've made it a small, like a smaller physically, the engine. They made it more compact. You just go, they didn't exactly have great reliability last season. Like, how mm. do they get like a lot more power yeah. and a lot more reliability? And well, like, you know, not even for the formation. Well, it was the formation lap, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> not even for the first lap. They're like having yeah. issues. It's not great. Well, it's interesting because I actually thought it was isolated to the steering wheel because they heard that he had one changed before formation lap because of that. Ooh. As opposed to a power unit issue. Okay. But then you, I think Honda, you, you know much more about Honda's last Formula One campaign. <laughs> but I think the word, the fact that they brought up size zero again screams problems. Yeah. Yeah. I'd... Um... They should just like gloss over the fact, that, you know, anything to do with their relationship with McLaren, because mm. I think every aspect was that, that was wrong. Like mm. it didn't seem mm. like either side managed that well. Yeah, but either way, Perez. I mean, he got his, you know, steering wheel switches on. He was listening to his engineer, and lo and behold, he has to start from the pit lane, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he came from the pit lane to P five, I believe. P five, which, which I think is incredible. Yeah, which... Albon couldn't have done that. No, like. Uh... Albon was struggling to do that at some races where like he'd qualified in the top 10, I want to say. So, yeah, I, I feel mm. like considering how well um, Lando Norris was doing in front of him, that would have been the best he could have done. So, mm. Indeed. Fair play. Oh, no, that's a phone. Ta -ta. Let's not have that. <laughs> it's me last You did week. it last week, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> but now, now we're on silent. Right. Okay. But, um, next point, Max. Wow. World champion question mark. That's what I wrote. Uh, on based on that performance, no. Like he, he's um, he's like he's not quite in control when he's like pushing to the to the max. <laughs> um, <laughs> are you are you with? Have you been drinking, sir? Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but are you referring to his overtake? That yeah, he ran wide on turn four. Yeah, it, it's like he, when he came out for his final pit stop, it was like. 
just over 10 laps maybe uh, until the end of the race. And you think, okay, you could see instantly he was like taking over a second out per lap. And you think, oh, this is fine. He's got this under control. He just needs to keep this pace up. He'll get up to Lewis and be able to easily pass. Uh, and then he just sat behind him like a second or two behind for a couple of laps. And then he went for that. And it just, hmm. it seemed like just very rushed and not in control of what he was doing. And then that was it screwed for the rest of the race. Yeah, dust on the tyres, a second behind with a like a lap and a half to get. Whereas Lewis just had to keep like a you know, cool head on and just keep driving as he was. You know, he didn't mm. he, he didn't have to do much defensive driving there. It's just Max fucked up. Yeah, but you know what's really annoying? So I mean, listen, people who are listening, people care. Basically, whenever we watch Formula One, we have like a couple of group chats. They, they fire up. We just fucking love slating people. Mm-hmm. What else do we do? Talking about like the fuck is this strategy? Like we know any better. How our bets are being <laughs> screwed over? Well, your bets. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we should address this now. <laughs> Basically, me and a friend of mine called Alex, we love to lose money. Like it. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna call it an issue because it's not. But we fucking love to lose yeah, money. Yeah. It's only small amounts, but like yeah. Alex yeah. screenshotted his account history. I think it's Skype. Yeah. And it's just like constant down. Like, yeah. Line. And the problem is we, we always seem to pick bets that we think are safe but have a bit of excitement. And I was joking with my dad as I was watching this. I told yeah. my bets and I was like, but dad, I tell you now, all my money's gone at turn one of the first lap. <laughs> and what, what was really fucking funny was the fact of like Perez didn't even get through the formation lap and that was both of my bets binned. <laughs> <laughs> but he came yeah, back I mean, through. He came back through. Yeah, yeah I mean, ultimately he started his car, but I think Just Gasly... Yeah, the rest were dependent on Gasly, yeah. and he lost the front wing in like the s- first lap. Yeah, I think there was more damage than that because like his pace was off the rest of the race. Yeah, even yeah. though he had that replace. So. Yeah, and a pit stop, you know, start to finish of the lane is like twenty seconds, and they got to put a new wing on, which is like at least two bolts. Take the old one off, two bolts, put a new one on. So it's a time-consuming thing. Yeah. On the back foot, stayed on the back foot. So For that sure. was fun. First weekend <laughs> of a year, lost money. <laughs> there's got to be a win at some point i think fingers so crossed bad. but uh mm, yeah indeed. i think that the house always wins yeah i mean obviously <laughs> but <laughs> that i think that's part of the excitement i mean me and Alex at this point are just like can't wait to give sky more money this weekend <laughs> <laughs> uh, like yeah. it definitely turns up like your engagement like how focused you are on the race because like yeah you're something right in line i get i get it to some degree but like yeah it doesn't it doesn't work for me the one the one bet i put on um was a surefire thing so um last year um it was the second silverstone race i can't remember whether they called it the british or the 70th i can't remember which one it was but it's the second one at silverstone nico hulkenberg like qualifies p3 and i just like he's a really good driver he's consistent like he can slip back a little bit and the bet was he finishes in the top six and he finished p7 (sighs) and how do you feel about that I mean, like, it still hurts when I think about it. Because he was doing Clearly fine. you've not caught the bug. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Money. I was burnt. Yeah. I was burnt. I am Matt and I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, ah, uh, nah, part, part of the fun. Part of the fun. Um, so that's all I have written down, actually, except for track limits were a bit dodgy. Turn four, question mark. Yeah, four one need to get their shit together. They've been the worst mm. of this for a while. Just like... Yeah, I mean, if people were using it, they're obviously using it to get an advantage. But why yeah, was yeah. it only called over the last five laps that they need to stop using turn four? Who knows? I believe like it wasn't that long ago that that the same track and they're having like the same problem with track limits there. They just need like, okay, the white line, you need to have like at least one tire in contact over the white line at all times. And boom, done. That's it. So it, nobody's ever going to query it again, you know? Yeah, I mean, and then they can dish out punishments accordingly, right? Yeah, yeah. But... They need a rule and then just stick to it because that was just annoying. Because like Lewis definitely gained time going over there. Mm, there we go. But also, actually, probably the last thing I have to say about Formula One. Go on. Was that I think it was kind of bullshit. Max had to give the place back. I mean, he obviously couldn't have cleared five seconds. But this is yeah. I, this well, is me like red, agreeing with his. Yeah, I think that was a Red Bull call though. That was them yeah. going like that looked a bit risky. Let's just like hand it back now so we have got as much time to unfuck this up so i think that was fair enough yeah i think most most of my like logic of that comes from his comment of like he'd rather take take the win get the five second penalty and be put in second than like 
yeah. have a say. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, yeah. I point, think from a point spectator being, point of view as well, yeah, that's the better point around. being. I guess Red Bull could have had it legit. Yeah, but they they shouldn't have been in that situation. I think they like they'll probably look at their strategy and, and figure it out like they're not quite used to being running at the front and like do a better job next time. Mm, indeed. Do you have anything else to contribute from Formula One? It looks good. Make Schumacher's debut. <laughs> yeah. He spun as well, but he didn't he didn't bin it. Yeah. So Do, already better than Mazepin. Does that reflect like how bad the Haas is and how different those cars are from F two? I'm not sure. Oh for There's sure. obviously a lot more power if it goes through those tires. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like yeah. um the first lap excitement perhaps. Different era of philosophy. Probably, yeah. Like they probably just should have they they're gonna be like Williams twenty nineteen where they're just significantly off the pace, I think. Mm. Mm. And so they just need to get the experience yeah. of being like consistently going around the track for hopefully doing better next year. Yeah, I think so. I, but I'm surprised Haas didn't take a philosophy of like, right, let's set it up, for, let's set this up for two free tracks, whether that's high speed, low speed, what, blah blah blah, downforce. Sorry, I'm just pouring a glass of wine, so I'm stalling. Um, <laughs> but I think that requires effort, though. I think they actually, just this went... is a two. This is this is a two. This is a two man job. <laughs> Shit. I went to a very expensive carpet and a very nice room that I'm not actually allowed to sit in. Oh dear. Which is a classic. I mean, you're. you're I mean, I suppose everyone has. Everyone. Shit. Everyone had. <laughs> <laughs> it's going well over Everyone there. has a room in their house mm-hmm. where they're not really allowed to sit. And we have one in our last house and we have more rooms in this house. And I'm not allowed to use like four of the rooms. <laughs> oh my God. Well, uh,. It's not the case of my parents' house for sure. It's a, it's a very much a two dogs and they go wherever they want. Oh god! If I leave doors open to these rooms, I, I'm. This is why I don't live here. <laughs> Plus the Wi-Fi is shite. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yes, what we were saying. I think, I think it's we had time. We have one closing point on F one. I think maybe. Uh, did we do it? I can't remember. But yeah, I was pouring wine. Either way, I'm gonna do the call. I'm gonna do. It, it looks good. We we like I'm it. Gonna do it. Good fun. Go. Okay, yeah, exciting season. You happy now? Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's oh, I can show, okay, I won't talk Ooh. to Mike because that's obnoxious. Let's, let's not blow people's um, speakers. Shit. Uh, that is the end of the Formula One section. You may stop skipping now through boring stuff you may perhaps not understand. <laughs> and I propose, that, Liam, uh-huh. you give me a song recommendation this week. I didn't like Perth last week. I'm gonna be honest with you, it wasn't my vibe. I, 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 as I was saying it, it's like I didn't initially like it, and I think it, it would, it's going to be a bit marmite. But um, I do like it. Are you telling me uh, it's a grower, not a shower? Potentially, potentially. <laughs> like it, it could be that. <laughs> I should get. I, I should go back to coffee during this stuff. Maybe we'll, we'll go back to the morning, <laughs> and we won't be quite so all over the place. Uh, no, but did like, you tell the listeners why we're doing this today? We're doing it on a Monday. Yeah, did, don't we usually do this on a Sunday? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Basically, we were busy. Okay, guys, get over <laughs> it. <laughs> right. Anyway, I should have right song recommendation. Running now. late, but sounding great. Yeah. Okay. So it's "Sober" by Aquilo. A Q U I L O. Or Aquilo. Did you just refer? Did you just spell that out from your phone? No, no, no. I've written it. I've written it down. Sober what? by a. Aqui- okay, Aquilio. Yeah, I've, only- okay, I've, I've just liked it. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've, I've never heard it, sorry. I've only seen it like written down. So, mm. Okay, tell me about it. I wasn't expecting that question. Well, uh, you, <laughs> this is your song recommendation. Sell it to me. Sell it to the listeners. Sell it to our number one fan in India. Well, it, it's like a chill list and it's reflective. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, um, I love that. I know it's kind of peaceful and relaxed and laid back, but okay. reflective, you know. Okay, but more beat than Perth, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm aware, it's not about somebody dying of an overdose. Yeah, I mean, the story behind that was like quite deep. Yeah, it hits. Had sure. some significance. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, speaking of which, I've not watched the music video. I should do that. I don't think there is a music video, so uh, oh. yeah. I I went to Bonnie Bear's YouTube channel and it, it was just like a an album song so I don't think there's actually a video out there. Correct me if I'm wrong, listeners. You know, at us on Twitter or Instagram. Um, at out of our depth one. 
<laughs> I, I thought that was to... my job to plug the social. I'm sorry. I was trying to do a subtle plug, just like squeeze it in there. But like, I, I guess we stumbled over. Do you want? Do you, 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 you go ahead. I'll let you do it. Yeah, no follow problem. us on our social. Uh, uh, you do it. Oh, oh my word! Uh, at out of our depth one on Twitter, and over to you. <laughs> oh, we so screwed this up. And at out of our depth podcast on Instagram. <laughs> All right, I'm not having a glass of wine after this one. Okay, okay. okay. Um, sober up. <laughs> um, okay, I've saved it. Are you ready for my song recommendation? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting ready to type it out and have a look as well. Well, I've got a few actually. Oh wow! So okay. a song, a song played in our kitchen the other day. Sometimes me and Wano we play some music. Mm-hmm. All Star came on. Oh my god! You're not saying it. You're not saying anything. I'm not. By Smash Mouth, of course. That's. That's just deep and utter disappointment. But no, no, it's not my recommendation. I have, a, I have a few, I have a few, but... Okay, okay, okay. I've been really jamming to that recently, along with, like, Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> but, okay. Um, <laughs> so Please a song that... Better. Okay, go, go, go. A song that I like from the past, mm-hmm. Blue Blood by Falls. And I know I recommend some Falls, like, like two weeks ago, whatever, get over it. <laughs> but that's a really good song. Old Falls, okay. not new Falls, strictly. Mm. But a song that is new to me this week, it's called Freaking Out on the Interstate by Briston Marine. If I've said that right. We might I'll have let to you share the link it. to that. <laughs> have you got Spotify in front yeah, of you? Yeah, yeah. Freaking Out. Freaking Out. Well, Freaking Out Ooh, got on the Interstate. And the reason I like this is because these guys have got like, well, this guy, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. Like a real good like vaccines vibe. Like it's all sung through like what feels like a crappy microphone, probably worse than the one I use for this podcast. Okay. But lyrics are pretty good. Freaking out on the interstate, which is a motorway, obviously. Yeah, yeah. American. Don't think I've ever freaked out on one, but it speaks to me. I like the song. Yeah, yeah. I like vaccine vibes. That's it. That's uh You totally got it when I said vaccine vibes, right? Because I've been trying I spent the past two days trying to work out how to describe this guy. Or band. Or it's better than me trying to come up with something on the spot. <laughs> you didn't plan your song recommendation? No, I did. I, I had oh, the song, I but I probably should oh. have thought about how to describe it a bit better. Are we just recommending random songs now? Maybe. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I understand. I understand. Okay. Well, okay. Awesome. Actually, I do have something else people really want it, but I won't be forced to say it. Go on. You, you, uh, you see oh, you okay. You've, 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 you've yanked forced your hand. hand. Okay. Kendrick Lamar, but he's super chill for one hour on YouTube. Okay. I highly recommend it as background music. All right. All right. All right. It's, it's so... like a, I played it, sat in the sun on the race course. At the Was it um, maybe a few days ago? Mm-hmm. Blasted it out, played some football, had a few beers with some very good friends. I think you'd really like it, Liam. Okay. Okay, thanks for that. I'll, I'll check that one out. You're welcome. All right. All right. End of music Your session. topic or my topic? I'll, I'll let you hit it up first. I'll let you hit it up first. No, honestly, Liam, I've not shut up for like 15 minutes. It's your <laughs> turn. What? Okay. So um, I don't, I d- it's, it's more of a discussion point, I think. It's not around anything Ooh. specific. But here, here we go. I love a good... Will I get to moan during this discussion? I think so, because it's a little, oh, it's a little bit it. of a moan for me, and I feel like that that's what we really nail here. Is, is it, it is... socks and sandals? <laughs> no, but stop that if you do that, please. <laughs> it should be a war crime. Okay, right, I'll shut up. Go, 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 go. So um, I was watching uh, episode three of the, the latest season of, of Top Gear on Sunday. Okay. And, it, and it's fine. I don't... I was like just thinking like there's a couple of the car TV shows on the moment like on proper TV in the UK. There's Fifth Gear uh, and um, On the Road, which is by a YouTube channel called uh, Love Cars. If anybody's heard of that, it's quite small. I think it was on ITV4. But like, are we, have we gone past the point where we can have like Top Gear of like old sort of thing, like mid mid two thousand mid to late two thousands Top Gear? Where it's like proper reviews on cars. Some of the time, I know it's a lot of messing around, but they were all car journalists at Clarkson, Hammond and May back in the day, 
Whereas now we've got Paddy McGuinness and uh, and Andrew Flintoff, who, let's be honest, don't really have much of a clue what they're talking about. And is it just like... But is that not the whole dynamic of the new show is that it's supposed to be like Chris Harris knows a lot and the other two are like, it's got four wheels and an engine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's 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 Muffler entertainment bearings. rather than uh, like any in- information, yeah. like you know. Okay, okay. Like the the old show was very hyperbolic and like overproduced and stuff, but you get like real insight into cars, and that's only provided by Chris Harris when they let him out of his cage. Now, mm, okay, they let him go like super, yeah. super into it. So what what happened? Was it last night? You said. Yeah. What happened? What was the episode about? So it, it was this season's a little bit off because it's it's all been done like post lockdown like they recorded it mostly at the end of last year a bit at the start i think and it's quite short um there's no studio audience they're just doing it like television center with like the production crew as the audience so it, it's um it definitely feels different it's sort of like the studio in inverted commas se- uh, segments but this this whole was just one special kind of thing of like off-roaders so it started with the new land Rover defender and they brought in the the new g-wagon and the, the aerial nomad, which is... Okay, can I put a pin in this for one second? Hit me, go on. Did they do this thing in the... I think it was the second episode where I got really pissed off. They take it on a mild dirt track and say it's incredible off-road. <laughs> um, Be the, honest with me. The nomad. No, oh. no. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, Jesus Christ. With, with the Defender, yeah. It was pretty tame. Did they take it... Go on. It was pretty tame stuff they were doing with the cars, like like a muddy hill. I think was the the worst thing they hit. Because the G wagon was on road tires and just like the G sixty three AMG. So it's I'm like, over it. All right, let Liam. We have to pull the pin out before this turns into like me just getting angry. <laughs> but yeah, carry on. An I think a, a nomad. You were saying. Yeah, yeah. So uh, aerial is like the. I guess it's more like a, a dirt rally kind of inspired road car. So it's just like a climbing frame with a Honda engine in the back. Should I look it up now so I know what I know? If you're yeah, yeah. About. I think most people know what it's about. It's like an insane, stupid, pointless thing, but it's awesome. Um, and it, they were doing this in the depths of winter in Scotland. So uh, and uh, That's pretty cool. Flintoff was driving it and he was just like freezing the entire time. But, was it like all specced up with... Wait, should I put Top Gear after it and have a little look? Yeah, I want to yeah. see what their spec was, whether it had like like rally lights and actual aggressive mud tires or... Yeah, rally lights, uh, from memory, like pretty aggressive oh. tires. Like uh, it had a winch on the front. You know, it's a re- was reasonable it red? Step. No, it's like a beigey colour, I think. Like okay, well, either way, it looks pretty mean, but wholly impractical. Like yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not having a good, you're not having a good day off-roading in that. No, you're, no, you're uncomfortable. You can't make a sandwich while you're tackling an obstacle. <laughs> it's not, you haven't got a seat full of snacks. No, it's not really designed for anything, but it's cool. I want one. Like it just looks stupid. Yeah, I mean, I did just see it's got like 355 horsepower, so that's pretty sick. Yeah, it weighs like six, seven hundred kilos. Yeah, and I'm down at like a hundred at a push mm. and but- two tons. <laughs> I'm over it. We're not, we're not descending into that 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 yeah. part. But, so you're telling me Top Gear's got boring. It's gone tame. Yeah, I, I've, there's there's nothing on car TV that's sort of like it's all pretty Grand low tour quality. Yeah, if you're actually interested in cars, it's pretty low quality stuff that's available now. Like Fifth Gear's not great, and I watched a bit of uh, the On the Road show that I was talking about on ITV4, mm-hmm. and that's it was just <sighs> vanilla. It's a great moan. Yeah. If I'm honest with you, and you I've hated at the Top moment. Gear. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, go, go, go. Well, I'll let you talk about Top Gear because we're very low on subject. No, and, and no, I'll finish no, my... no. <laughs> but so I, I... Finish, finish your drink. All right. I'll talk. So Top Gear, obviously Jeremy decided to punch someone. Mm-hmm. Good on him. And then since they got in, was it Chris Evans? Yeah. Ooh. I've just, I've just, I know he came and went. But since right, then, I've just did. been so off the brand of like, I just can't be bothered with what they produce. Like, I mean, to the best of my knowledge, they don't make things like Africa specials or like, you know, like proper America specials or any sort of content that I actually find funny. Yeah, at points I've been wondering, like, why I still bother. There's occasional good stuff. Like, well, it's, I, I, I pretty much not... only watch, watch it for Chris Harris, who's essentially my god. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. And he, he knows a crap ton about cars. He's mm-hmm. had, 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 has or had some interesting cars at one point. Oh, he's got sheds full of stuff. One of them yeah. being a 599 manual, which is up there with one of the dream cars. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I think also, stuff. yeah, YouTube is YouTube is really dead. I've really stopped watching anything automotive on YouTube. I just watch really lame stuff now. Yeah, I don't think like people who, who are doing a good job can make much money from it now. There's yeah. occasional good stuff like uh, car affection. I don't know if you watch them but there uh here and there usually when you link something to me <laughs> but yeah i'd say they, they're the most reliable channel in mm. terms of producing mm. stuff that's yeah. like you know they've, they've got some knowledge behind it and it, it it's fun to watch yeah but other stuff is i quite think um, back to what you were saying though top mm. gear at least at one point was the bbc's biggest earner yeah I'm, I, and i would arguably say it probably still is you know, because because it's not just the TV show; it's it's the magazine, it's it's the, the traffic that goes through the Top yeah. Gear website. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they've obviously put a lot of resources into building that, and to, to drop it because of a presenter change or if it has a bad season, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is not probably not what the BBC wants to do because TV licenses are a hot topic. I was abused by the TV licensing agency <laughs> for a hot minute. They they love uh, to do that. But yeah, exactly. It's a cash cow, and like, even if it's only exactly. earning a, a like small percentage of what you used to, it, yeah. that's still a yeah. lot of money. But Top Gear still exists. They're putting it in front of your face. Pay your TV license, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Not cheap though. Like hundred hundred and forty pounds, some, something gross like that. It's about that. It's I think it's hundred and thirty something, but pretty much hundred and forty. Something up. Something up. I wasn't happy about uh, contributing towards. Yeah, you put you put it in the context of like how much you pay mm. for a monthly of Netflix or like part of a Netflix when you share it with your house or something. That's true. Tell you what, subscriptions. Oh my lord! <sighs> like so, actually, most of the subscriptions I have aren't actually mine, but I have access to the account. So I have Netflix. That, I've got that, Disney that's Plus, like ninety percent. I don't. I, I I swear, there's like five people in the UK who've actually paid for a subscription, and it's just yeah, everybody yeah. else borrowing their account. Yeah, the the newest hottest one being Disney Plus. I think. Mm. <laughs> I'm using I'm using like <laughs> the friend of a friend of a friend's mom's Disney Plus. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> which is atrocious. And Disney, if you're listening to this, I'm I'm not really doing that. Uh, uh, but, don't pay full price for your own account. I've yeah, been yeah. drinking. Nothing I say from this point is is <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> okay. Are you done moaning about Top Gear? I guess so. Yeah, it, it's. I, fine, I really took us off track. <laughs> I, I feel like yeah, it, it's like. There's definitely like a segment of to- uh, television that's just like dead because mm. the audience doesn't mm. exist anymore, which is kind of there's like got frustrating. To, there's got to have been one episode of the of the new Top Gear chapter that was really good that you can think of like straight away. Not really good, you know. Uh, my sure. parents watch it and will be like, "Oh, this is quite a good segment or something." Mm. Um, and Ooh, the, there's a, yeah. like there's always moments that are good. Like the first mm. episode. Um, was about th- their dad's cars and stuff, and there was like a, you know you got like a genuine heartfelt moment from Chris Harris about his dad and like I don't know like he died twenty years ago and like how that still hurts and like special Ooh. to be in his car and stuff and like it was like felt like genuine emotion obviously turned up a little bit. I think I'm getting but, emotional. Yeah, my eyes have actually watered up. <laughs> sure, it's not like the heady mix. Yeah, of move on, move mine. on, move on. <laughs> Third, move on. Okay, okay, okay. What's your topic? Um, not so much of a topic as something, or as something I wanted to tell you about. Ooh! In my attempts at scrambling at a topic. Okay. 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 I actually need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> is this the oh Top Gear God. thing with Chris? Does that really hit you? Just about Dad's cars. Well, I don't know. It all, it all just got me a little bit there. Okay. I blame I blame the jammy red rue yellowtail wine. Yeah. You definitely t- tired okay, emotional. Right. Pull yourself together, Matt. Right. Um, um. What do you know about baseball, Liam? <laughs> it, make, uh, it makes for a good movie. It does. And you say the movie. S- say a movie. Um, no, save, save a movie, I'm going to say. Moneyball? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Now, <laughs> I... Wa- <laughs> All right, take a drink for that. That was, that was great. <laughs> Okay, right. So basically, uh-huh. I watched this the other night. I was just, I was in bed. I was in bed like way early, like maybe like seven thirty. Oh wow! Week. It was real week. Are you like eighty right? or something? Uh, eighty-five next month actually. Wow. Um. Uh, okay, so we we know the plot, but maybe I should just read out this Wikipedia page I've got. <laughs> Go for it. 
Liam, correct me if I'm wrong, it's based on a true story. Yeah. Correct. So, Mondo. Billy Bean, general I'm so bad at reading and I've been drinking it. <laughs> okay, right. Um, Let's see how bad Billy Bean, here. general manager of the Oakland Athletics, is hurt by the team's loss to the New York Yankees in two thousand one. So basically, some ways that they got to the final game of like the season, like you know yeah. the, the finals, right, mm-hmm. and lost. That cuts him up, and he realizes that maybe they've been doing things wrong for years, you know, because like there's a there's a scene in this movie where they're talking about players, and he's like, yeah, he can hit a ball, but he doesn't look good, you know, or like, yeah. give me another example if you can remember it, Liam. But it's basically it's, just it's been a, a bunch while. of old a bunch of old guys around the table, and they're they're like debating, you know, like Talent all these scouts. players, yeah. And this this is a really low budget team. Like I think it's something like 30, 38 million, mm-hmm. whereas the New York Yankees are one hundred forty nine million, like uh, yeah, their yeah. payroll or something like that. Different league, but same league, kind of, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then basically, uh, he's pissed off. Blah blah blah. Jonah Hill comes along, and he's like, has like this, you know, like code, all this, all this shite on a page that says like Big these are the thoughts. most undervalued amazing players out there i know amazing mm-hmm. is the wrong word undervalued could be really good players out there yeah a key right? part of like the jigsaw of the baseball yeah team. and of course the key theme of this is the budget of his team yeah 30 30 something million. i've been drinking don't worry about it um <laughs> yeah so but basically they put together this like how would you like just like a band of rascals like a bunch a bunch of people who are like either a kind of like 40 years old and going out mm. uh i remember there's a picture that throws like you've never seen a picture throw before yeah and so, then like yeah yeah it's so it's all about like the statistics of like how the players actually perform not like how the talent scouts feel about yeah. them and then building yeah. that into the best team rather than getting like yeah the best player they can for their budget and then like, yeah i mean they're the playing rest. they're paying 270k a year for the player as opposed to 7 million a year for the player yeah for sure and right? it's just like completely different yeah way of thinking about how to build a team yeah and long story short is it's a mess because they've got players playing things that they've never done before like a batter playing first base or something i don't, I don't yeah because statistically I, I they look F-O. like that's the position they yeah. should be in rather than the one that like they've yeah. been told to their whole yeah. life from the numbers yeah. Tell and jonah hill plays this quite quiet character who's like almost a genius behind this mm-hmm. so his coach is like risking it all because he was so like butthurt about <laughs> second right yeah yeah it's like do or die yeah. you may as well yeah and long story short is that there's no confidence behind it it's a mess no uh but no then, confidence in the team no confidence from the league no confidence from the yeah, fans exactly. everybody yeah. hates it but him. once once they start getting the coach to play it right how how many how many wins in a row Liam? like 20 um it was I a record film, it was a record yeah 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 that's how the, it's like flamed around like some important record i mean it was a while ago that i watched it and i don't really know yeah. anything about baseball anyway but it yeah. sells the emotion and like just the importance of like you, you do shit the same way and like expect a different results so it's like the definition of insanity yeah yeah so basically yeah they basically said well we got no money let's try something different think differently yeah. we're a bunch of old guys around the table maybe a lot of like dogma there right Mm-hmm. Uh, I I mean they okay spoiler alert they don't win they don't win the all what what is it the all stars like yeah some important yeah league. they don't they don't the trophy, they don't win the, cup. the world championship of baseball okay they lose the final game actually Liam if you stall for thirty seconds I'll tell you exactly what it is right now okay so um how do I stall for thirty seconds I do, I don't I don't even know what to search like uh I. I I should know who this is. Base, but I watched, baseball uh, best, best trophy. <laughs> Maybe best we can trophy. look at that. <laughs> but I, I think I watched a video a while back about like what's the best sport to make a movie. The World of? Series. The World Series. World Series. Okay. Done. Okay. okay sorry, Carol. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So it, by joking. Patrick H. Williams, and he's like the best um, sport to make a movie about, and it was baseball. Because wait, Liam, I'm really sorry. What are you talking about? I was looking at my phone, Googling. Is I missed most of the intro. <laughs> so it's a YouTuber called Patrick H. Williams. And he, he does okay. like in-depth movie analysis in weird and quirky ways. And his latest video uh, was about how um, baseball is the best sport to make a movie about. Can I guess why? Go for it. Most viewers of any other sport. 
uh i don't With think fans, he mentions that I'm sorry maybe but it, it's it's like the, the the practicalities of filming it in terms of like the pace of the game so like uh basketball is like really easy to film because it's in a small space but it's really fast paced and like the scores and stuff like it's hard to keep track of how the game's actually progressing whereas like baseball is like people are in fixed positions so it's really easy to frame it down a camera and like it's really easy to understand because visually you can look at like how far somebody's got around the bases or like how far they've hit the ball so you don't need to understand like the rules of the sport because visually it's the most communicative on film is essentially the summary of his essay did, was this recommended to you after watching Moneyball or something? Was, was no, 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 cookies, no. Was the cookies monster going at it? <laughs> no, no. The, the, I like the last time I watched it. I watched it two or three times. Moneyball. Last time was about a year ago, I'd say. But Patrick H. Williams, I, I've been watching for quite a while. It was just his latest video that came out two weeks nice. ago. So yeah, nice. It's it's something like forty five minutes. So I don't know if it's for everybody who's listening to this, but I'm into it. <sighs> That's a commitment. I'll tell you that now. He, that's it, more than I'd be willing to throw out there. His videos are fucking weird. Uh, he's got like this running bit where he's got like his side character that's a talking coconut. Oh god! And Liam, <laughs> like, if forty-five minutes of talking coconuts, are you no, okay? No, it's it's like some of the YouTubers would spend twenty minutes talking about like the actual purpose of the video, and he does that, but then it's like. 10 minutes of like this ongoing saga of the coconut and him, I guess, in this semi fictitious world. And they're like, they're trying to increase his star ranking, and um, it feels like a fucking trip. I'm not going to lie. I mean, are it's you, not I because mean, I'm drunk. This yeah. is this this yeah. is genuinely like a, just this ongoing YouTube series on Patrick H. Williams about movies, but there's a talking coconut, and that's okay. And that is that is okay. I yeah. I mean, you can you can watch exactly what you want on YouTube. You can. I mean, to be fair, my YouTube history is pretty rogue. <laughs> I don't know how quick I don't know how quickly I can put. I've been watching everything from like scenes in Jarhead, which is like a like a like a like a war film from the yeah. Gulf. <laughs> it's just Original him being motivation. screamed screamed at by a drill sergeant. This YouTuber I like picked up a solid axle swap Toyota and he basically like trial by fire is what it's called to okay. go on like some of the toughest trails in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sounds well, like very you. That is very me actually. What else, what else have I got here? I've got the 299 Aldi espresso machine. How bad could it be? I watched that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And the title totally Holy got me. <laughs> totally got me. <laughs> How bad? Very bad. Yeah, he didn't like it, right? No, no. Like, every aspect well, of it, he was like... So, he's I mean, James I watched Hoffman? this falling asleep. Yeah, it is actually well done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. how is that different from your espresso machine? Is Do you have a 299-pound espresso machine? Um, it's different from my espresso machine because my parents bought it and therefore there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Hi, mum and dad. I did that as I was taking a drink. But, no, like, <laughs> mine's good. I like... This James Hoffman is like a world barista champion or something. So Yo, like, yeah, he's totally won some sort of competition. He's yeah, way so too like, into coffee. Ma- yeah, yeah, massive coffee snob. And I'm I'm just not that. So like the, the one that my parents got me for Christmas, I think, is, is very nice. It does me, makes very nice coffee. But like I could see like if I presented my espresso machine to this, this Hoffman guy, he would just tear me a new one and i i use pre-ground coffee which i think he thinks is a sin and stuff like uh, that. i think i think that is a sin actually oh is it oh jeez. i mean i i don't know i mean i have an espresso machine so that's technically worse but i'm also lazy yeah and you can use capsules as well yeah but maybe i can plug my favorite coffee go on maybe someone wants to post it to me sponsor y- Yes, yes. I feel like uh, per, well, per on brand. well, I've decided that I definitely don't want Yellowtail to sponsor me because their wine is shite. <laughs> so shout out to everyone in Australia listening, but <laughs> what south Piss southeastern Australia? Country. Don't don't drink that shit. <laughs> uh so it's uh it's by a company called Kicking Horse Coffee, and it's called Kick Ass Brew. And I maybe drank this coffee almost exclusively, except for like gas station coffee, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Costas for like a year straight and it is the best coffee beans i've ever tasted it's all kind of smoky it's a very strong cup of coffee it's delicious and actually it's it's so uh 
They're from a golden BC, right on the border of uh, British oh. Columbia and Alberta. Because you lived in Canada I, once, right? On uh, your... I think I might have. Maybe it was just a, it was a brief, brief holiday. Not, you, you never talk about it, you know. But uh, yeah, but it's a small thing. man, this thing, this thing, this thing, this cat, the caffeine in this coffee has left a print on my heart. But basically, I bring back two bags of this stuff of, of like fresh bean, you know, not ground or anything, right? Yeah, yeah. And I go away for a week. I, my, my parents have builders in. And both banks of these coffee, of my coffee, is gone. Like, they, they, they'd offered my coffee, like, they, the thing I prize above everything else in the morning, to some builders that are out. You just get the cheapest instant shit. That's what, that's exactly. what builders drink. I'd, was, I've never come really across buzzed. a builder who's like, no, 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 I, I only drink freshly ground espresso. No, I've actually made myself angry right now. <laughs> I, might, I might have to go outside and smash something. <laughs> All right, all right. But yeah, long, long story short is I had to internet order some more, which was grossly expensive, but I needed it, so. Oh, okay, I was about to say, should I order a bag? But if you said grossly expensive, you immediately turned me off. Yeah, well, I mean, must must be different when you have a big boy job for an insurance company. <laughs> Something like Don't that. Don't commit insurance for kids. No, no, yeah. Liam, Liam will be on you like there's nothing. <laughs> oh, okay, right. I'm going to shut up after this question. Okay. How's the car search coming? So have we so progressed? It's 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 in the exploratory phase. So I'm it's pretty pretty sure it's the it's a it's a golf I'm getting Mark Seven, but uh, I'm not committing to like. I need to wait for the a financial situation to occur in terms of like wait for the next paycheck kind of thing. <laughs> so we're, we're just shy of a month away from uh, from, from the time. serious search. Yeah, yeah, like as a good. Because nowhere would be open to go look at a car physically. At the Yo, moment. that's so true. I think it's only just like 29th stuff spin ease up today. And I would like to look at stuff and get some test mm. drives this time. Yeah. Well, I went to a hairdresser today, speaking of things being open. I mean, oh. it's completely aside from the point, but it feels good having stuff open, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it does. Yeah, so I mean, I, but, I I mean honestly, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to go somewhere, you got to rag the shit out of it on a test drive, look yeah. underneath it, you never drill. All the good stuff. Um, Liam, I'm binned. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think this is a great point for me to sign off for the evening and yeah, watch some so. Order of the Rings. Yeah, I, th- I think we need to check out before we like completely go off the rails. <laughs> yeah, because I'm about to chug the rest of my wine. So, <laughs> And then we'll do the outro. We have an outro? I think we just say goodbye, don't well, we? Is it, is it not just me? Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should... Rec- I mean, I'd be willing to record one now if you wanted to after this. I know, we'll, we'll <laughs> no, think okay, about right. it, we'll think about it. But uh, yeah. No, indeed, indeed. Thank um, you very much for listening. Uh, l- let us know if you prefer drunk Matt and Liam or <laughs> hyper-caffeinated Matt and Liam. Oh, God. <laughs> um, anyway. I mean, all I know is I've embarrassed myself through the whole of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay right. Okay. Bye. bye, 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 bye. Thanks for listening, bye.